Hello everyone, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, along with my daughter Lila. Hello. <laughs> She'll be moderating the chat today. I hope everyone's having a great day. I'm just going to push a couple buttons here and make sure I can see what you're seeing. Um, if you have a question as we're going through our happy scrappy hour today, all you got to do is type the word QUESTION in all caps. That way Lila will spot it and ask away. Uh, there are probably some other moderators in chat. They usually hop in there from, um, from now and again, and they may be able to answer your question. But if you type QUESTION in all caps, then Lila can spot it and ask it to me here. And if you're curious... Uh, that's Lila right there. Maisie moderated last week's chat and uh, that's my daughter Lila. We're gonna do a back to school layout. We're going to do maybe a 4th of July layout and we're gonna make some cards with the scraps. I have not scrapbooked in a while so it might be a little rough guys and I don't have a bunch of like brand new modern scrapbooking supplies so you know I think in this in this day and age in this um, current state of affairs learning how to refresh things we already have and make do with what we have is a uh, a good thing and um, maybe it'll spark some um, some inspiration for you to work through your layouts as well. Got any questions yet Lila? Not yet. Okay wonderful. Um, you can type in where you're watching from. Um, I saw my friend Tracy from Florida is there. She, we actually scrap it together in like real person. She's from this area uh, so it's nice to see her and Jacob in the house and all of our other friends. So don't be shy get in the chat, say hello, visit with friends. The replay will be available later, so you can always watch it again if you want to learn some techniques. Um, all right, we're, the first thing I usually start with when I'm scrapbooking is the photos. Um, I find that the photos are the most important and everything else is secondary. When your kids are looking through your scrapbooks, years and years down the, down the line, they're gonna be concerned with the photos. Now, some things I do to prepare to scrapbook is I like to work with paper pads. And um, I go for paper first. And so I found this paper pad a few years ago at E.C. Moore, and I loved the kind of vintage school patterns. Now, a lot of times your paper pads will have um, pages that you can cut apart and use as embellishments. And I love to do that because it keeps your pages flat so they don't rip the page protectors or they don't damage other photos in your book. So I recommend look, looking through your paper stack, see what you can find that can be used as embellishments. And um, also, if you choose your papers first, um, going by your photos, it's a lot easier to, like if you wanna stamp something and color it, it's really easy to match if you've got your papers first. So I went ahead and I pulled out some sheets of paper I really liked. I cut out one of these strips, one of the paper that had strip designs out to make, um, you know, headers or titles. I also cut out a all the little um, cards off of another sheet of pattern paper. So I'd have all that all ready to go. And now I'm gonna figure out how I want my pages to go here. I've got two 12 by 12 sheets. I'll be shifting them around so you can see them. And my son here, who uh, will not be delighted that I am scrapbooking a picture of him, but I think uh, I think he'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't tell him. I don't think he watches my channel, do you, Lila? No. <laughs> Um, I really liked this strip that I cut off a piece of uh, pattern paper because it looks like a nice a nice title, back to school. These are first day of school photos. And let's see. They generally start school on different days. My son and uh, my girls go to different high schools, so they start on different days. So I never get a picture of them all together on um, first day of school. After I've figured out how I want my papers to go, I'm sorry about the glare, uh, then I will figure out where a journaling card will go because I feel like that is the second best or most important part of the story is where I'm going to write. And I don't write a lot on my pages. I don't like my penmanship very much. So I'll just try to find something kind of small, something with, you know, some decoration that I just have to write a few lines on. I like that. I think that's really um, bold. It stands out on the paper. So I'm going to go with that. And then I also like to mat some of my photos. I don't necessarily mat them all, but if I don't have a border on it, then I like to mat. And if I have a solid background, oftentimes I'll mat with a pattern paper. Do we have any questions yet? No. All right. I kind of like that one because that's not too busy. It's like a standardized test bubble. 
and I'll see if there's any direction or orientation to the paper. And this is probably super basic, guys, so um, I hope you're having a good time hanging out and chatting. I don't know if you're going to learn very much. If you've been scrapbooking for any amount of time, you're probably, you know, you're like, this is remedial scrapbooking, Lindsay. This is a trimmer that I really like. Uh, it's the Cutter Bee, and you can still get the cutters for it, so I'm assuming that the trimmer is still available, but um, it's got a fold-out arm. I like that for my travel my travel paper trimming, uh, but I use like an old X-Acto guillotine-style trimmer at home. I find that they're more economical in the long run because you don't need to replace blades. Although this one's pretty good. I haven't had to replace that blade more than a couple times and I've used this for probably about I don't know probably about 15 years I'd say now any scrap scraps that we have left over we can use for card making so I try to keep all these coordinating scraps together and use them up while I have them all out I just find it's a little bit easier to make use of that and then this one I want to map that photo I love that one I think I'll use that paper the adhesive roller I'm using is an ATG gun or advanced tape glider and I get the inexpensive generic refills for it so uh, that would be a big tip if you're going to go with a machine like that it saves you a lot of money and you're not throwing away those up like plastic um, those disposable plastic double side tape things so Oh, an... there's a question. Oh yeah, what's if the question? The rest of us, like our family, is um, vegan. Do you want to answer that, or do you want me to? Um, I'm a vegetarian, um, and everybody else eats meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lila's my vegetarian buddy. But actually, I mean, I, I I would say probably a lot of our meals at the house are vegetarian anyway. If I don't feel like cooking two meals, it's uh, it's a lot simpler. Now let's. I think because I don't want to cover now you can split one of these um, split your title so it goes between two pages I use a d-ring style album so uh, because of that if I do a split title like this where I cut it um, there's a gap between how the pages lay together so I typically don't like to do that but that is an idea if you have a postbound album you can split your title and it's just kind of like an interesting element and then you could like maybe use another you could mix it up with something else and just kind of build your title across that way and like i said i haven't scrapbooked in a long time so i may be completely not trendy and well i'm sure i'm not trendy but i could be completely like <laughs> square did you just do the square <laughs> like a square in the air <laughs> no i was saying that there's a question oh okay um, Rhonda Jenkins, Jenkins says, um, where do you get your refill for the tape machine? I get mine and I bought like a, a pack of 144 at tapedepot.com and then I split it with my friend Tracy who's actually watching in the chat and my friends Kathy and Cindy. So we all have these same guns so I bought a huge thing and we split it. And uh, you can get smaller packs now. You can get like a dozen refills instead of 144 which is much more handy for most people. All right, I think I want to take some of that color and have it over here. So what I'm going to do is actually just take this paper and give it a good old tear. And I'm going to tear it towards myself so I get this nice white edge. Yep, I'm so not trendy. I might as well just bust out the decorative edge scissors, which I still have, and uh, make a day of it. Now, if you don't glue it all the way to the top, you can make a pocket and you can stick things in. So I think I will do that. I'll just leave the top unglued so I can tuck something else in if I decide I want to. How many people do we have hanging out with us today, Lila? 168. Oh, nice. I didn't know how many people would come out for a scrapbooking um, one because I haven't done a scrapbooking one since like, the, I think my first ever live stream was scrapbooking. We did like Halloween layouts. And I think that was it. Oh, I kind of like how that's going together. I'm not going to glue down the photos yet. Um, so I'm going to shift over to this page. I could have zoomed out a little bit more before I started, but I thought that I'd have a, it would, I would have a little bit more detail. I could probably go ahead and stick down that header, though. Okay. I think I want something in this corner. I want a little pattern. 
and don't be afraid to use a bunch of uh, use a bunch of patterns. I'm gonna tear this away from me because I want to have my white on this edge. There we go. I love these vintage school colors. Question. Yes. Um, from Karen Page, do your daughter scrapbook? <laughs> well, have you you've scrapbooked a bit? Yes, I have, but I haven't in a while, and I don't really know about Maisie. I think you both have at some point. You both have scrapbooks, but I don't think you've done it much lately. Kind of yeah. like me, I haven't done it much lately either. Oh, it's too bad. Oh, hey, we got these little alphabet, these uh, cursive. I love those cursive posters. I think I'll do a do a border across the pages with those. I like that. The thing you want to just keep in mind when you are using your adhesive, like I mentioned getting cheap tape, just make sure that you're getting an acid-free tape. And the tape that I get is called quarter inch acid-free, I think it's called acid-free scrapbooking tape over at Tape Depot. Um, you want to acid-free so that when like the years go by, you don't end up with yellow, brittle photos in your albums. But that's the only, that's the only, you know, thing you want to keep in mind. If you're doing card making and you don't care about your cards lasting forever, that's not really that important. But in your scrapbook pages, you don't want to have those pages yellowing. So I'm thinking I'll go, I might go over these photos with this strip and go under the photos with that strip. I think that might be kind of cool. Um, and I also have some stamps. I'm just wondering if I want to do anything with the stamps. I've got this roller stamp that's like an old-fashioned ruler, but I think that if I... I'm just wondering if it might be too much pattern, too many lines, too much, you know, horizontal line. Maybe if I went across that underneath where these titles are going to be, that would look cool. Let's do that. We got another question. Yes, fire away. Um, from Melissa, do you know um, anywhere to get the sequin salvage with just the holes from stenciling and mixed media? In small amounts? Uh, no, but if you know somebody who is a drywaller, somebody who does like, you know, drywalling um, as a profession, uh, you know, a contractor or something, they have a paper, tape, paper tape that looks just like that. You can actually get a roll at the hardware store, but that would work really well. Let's see. This awesome. is kind of textured. What's up? Is our AC more being taken over by another big box store? Supposedly it is, although I wouldn't, if, if the way things are going, I don't know how risky companies are going to be. I don't know if companies are going to take a, take a chance with opening many new stores, but that was the plan. Michael's was supposed to come in and uh, take over our, uh, our AC more. I'm getting a foam, a piece of foam to stamp on because this paper is textured, this cardstock's textured, so I know I'm not going to get a very good impression. But that's all right. I just kind of want it for some like texture anyway. Um, but just having a foam to stamp on a piece of foam is going to help quite a bit. And I'm going to get a thick ruler to roll my stamp roller. This is a Rollograph. The Stampin' Up sold these. Um, they originally were by, I think, Clear Snap, which I don't think that company's in business anymore. Um, oh, I got a gridded mat here. My mat that's underneath everything is by Altenu. I'm going to try to line that up, which is difficult to see down over this, and that way I can maybe line up my ruler a bit. And I just use these with ink pads. You can get cartridges for these, at least you used to be able to. I have no idea if you can still find these. Okay, that was all right. Okay, so it just gave me a little bit of a, of a um, kind of a ruler pattern. It's grungy, that's kind of what I'm going for with this layout. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue down my title strip while I'm at it. Now this is probably more of a video that you'd keep on for company while you're scrapbooking because the chances of us having the same supplies or scrapbooking the same photos are probably pretty slim. All right, now I'm going to glue down the photos on this page because I feel pretty comfortable with how I have everything chosen. And another tip would be to take a photo. When you've got everything laid out, take a photo of it with your cell phone 
and then so when you take everything off you'll remember where you put every, where everything was going to go because it's amazing how quick you can forget where all of your elements were going to end up and overlap things that always looks good You got any more questions? No. Let's see if that's gonna go on top. Kathy's on. Oh yay! Hey Kathy. Another in-person, another <laughs> non-virtual scrapbooking friend. Actual real people friends. <laughs> Although we can't see each other during this this coronavirus time. Uh, let's see, how high did I want that? Look like that. Now we've covered up a lot of our stamping, but it's there mostly for just some uh, ambiance and texture. Question. Annie yes. says, where do you get your pattern paper? Oh gosh, I like to buy it in person because it seems like whenever I've ordered it online, um, I've been disappointed because it just isn't the same. Um, so I used to get it, get a lot of AC more. I'd get the I'd get the packs because um, I'm not too picky, and we don't have any local scrapbook stores around anymore. But um, yeah, I, I, or I would go to Joanne's or AC more. But if I go to the stamp show in the summer, I tend to get some loose sheets. And to be honest, I find myself making my pattern, my backgrounds and patterns more now than um, than I used to. And I really like doing that. So probably when, and I've given away so much paper recently. So probably by the time I use up a lot of my paper here, I'm just buying a sheet or two as the need arises and, um, and going with that because I'm just, uh, I don't know, I enjoy making my paper with like my gel prints and getting exactly the colors I want. It's kind of twice the fun. You get to make, have fun making the supplies and have fun using the supplies. Another question. Um, yeah. Anna asks, what glue do you use? Um, gosh, I'm, the, my glue selection is like the bane of my husband. Uh, my husband's editing <laughs> because it seems like I always pick the glue that's going to clog the worst. But what I have here, I use this a lot. This is Beacon 3-in-1. Um, I like it because it grabs really quickly for like buttons and uh, embellishments and stuff. I, I grabbed these at the Dollar Tree. They're Elmer's glue pens. Um, and I figured I'd just refill them with like Mod Podge or some other glue when I, when they were done. But I like that for die cuts, really lightweight, thin, like lacy things that don't need a lot of sticking power, but, um, but I do need like a wet glue on them. And then the other thing that I use quite a bit are these Scotch permanent glue sticks. I use those um, more for card making. I don't know if they're... I haven't used them on a scrapbook page. I don't see acid free on here. So um, I probably would just stick those for card making. I also have this, but to be honest, I haven't used it that much. That's the Tombow Multi. I used to like the Tombow Mono a lot, um, but I have run out of it. So I just like to have something with a fine tip for gluing intricate die cuts. And I like to have something with a, um, with a, like a thickness to it to be able to glue down heavy things. All right, I want to figure out how far down I stamped my ruler here. So I'm just going to line it up there. They're also asking if Ask the Crafter is coming back. Oh, well, Kathy's in the Kathy's in the house. <laughs> oh, Kathy, they're going to put us on the spot. Um, I wonder if Lorraine is here today. Uh, I don't have any immediate plans to start up Ask a Crafter. It was a lot of fun. We, I guess we'd have to do them on like online through uh, like a web conference now because um, social distancing and all. Uh, I don't have any plans to it. It was fun. I would like to at some point. Oh shoot. Be careful with your open ink pads. I just had my scrapbook lay laying on that. That wasn't very good. Um, hopefully that lines up pretty well. If not, I'm not going to worry about it. There we go. And I'm not worried that that's like not stamped right to the edge. It's like distressed. We're going for a distressed look here. So 
That's fine. I'd love to know in the chat if you could tell me where you get your scrapbooking inspiration from. I used to love um, subscribing to scrapbooking magazines back in the day. And um, I'm looking for some scrapbooking inspiration. I haven't done much scrapbooking in the last two years because um, well, I scrapbook every year. I'll scrapbook my parents a calendar. And um, other than that, I haven't, I, I don't do a lot of it. I gotta look at these the way they're gonna be. We have any other questions? Nope. Most people are talking about how um, they're bummed that AC Moore's closing. Oh, yeah, I am. Almost 200 people on. Oh, nice. Oh, I haven't glued down that bottom piece. That's why it's all floaty. Uh, Tracy says that Instagram has a lot of sc scrapbooking inspiration. Oh, I never thought about that. That's a good idea. Because And it's perfect because Instagram layouts are square and most scrapbook pages are square. Oh, get another question for you guys. How do you store your finished albums? Because those D-ring 12 by 12 albums are huge and I've, I've got one shelf in my living room that's big enough, but I've got more albums than I have space for them. And um, I would love to know how everyone stores their big albums. Jenny says Pinterest and the photo book sites. Well, that's a good idea. Like Snapfish? Is that what she's... I don't know. I love to have my photos kind of a little bit um, um, off kilter because then I get... Then you don't have to worry about having everything perfectly lined up. Oh, I kind of wish, oh, I'm going to ink the edges of this photo. I kind of wish I inked the edges of the photos, but I'll do this one because it's got that, that pattern paper doesn't want to stand out. I kind of wish I, I started off and, and did eight and a half by 11 because it, it would have been so much easier to find albums. It would be so much less expensive and it seems less overwhelming to tackle a um, to tackle a eight and a half by eleven inch page than a twelve by twelve page, and I kind of like the look of the eight and a half by eleven. Um, Joe says that his mom stores a lot of her flat and stacked stuff. I don't really know. And stacked stuff. Her album. Flat and stacked. Oh, her albums? She keeps her albums flat and stacked? I'm assuming. He didn't even say. Hmm. And lots of people are saying Pinterest. Pinterest. Cool. Yeah, I'd love to go on Pinterest. I'm usually going there for, like, organizing ideas. So I think I've organized, I've organized my craft room to within an inch of its life, so I gotta, I gotta branch out my organizing. Telling my friend Kathy, who's in the chat, that I want to come in and organize her supplies. Mm -hmm. She's not taking me up on that offer. Photo albums and expandable binders. Hmm. Expandable binders. I'm actually going to put this title over top here, but I'll put the photo, the other photo of my son, on top of this one. Do you guys with kids find it's much difficult, more difficult to get a photo of your son versus your daughter? I can get so many photos of my girls, but it's so difficult to get a photo of my son. And these actually were taken by his girlfriend. So that's why he's got a smile on his face and doesn't look completely put out by the request. <laughs> All right. So we've got the, we've got the pattern paper. We've got the photos. Now it's embellishment time. All right, that doesn't look too bad. I was so worried I was going to be super rusty because I haven't looked in ages. Um, 
all right, don't really have a ton of room, but I did have this neat die that it's a Sizzix Tim Holtz die. And it's like a locker. And I thought it was really cute. Um, and you can like tuck things into the little slots there. I thought that would be neat on one of these pages. And I also got a bunch of little, um, little tabs and things. It was another Sizzix die, which I thought would be kind of fun. I could put the date here. I know you can't see all the layout there, but, um, but I'll shift it around when I get to working on that page. Um, I also have some wood veneer shapes because I like using wood veneer shapes. Lots of neat. I think I got these at Dollarama in Canada. This little set here. Question? Yes, question. Um, for anyone such as myself wanting to get into scrapbooking for the first time, is it something that would cost a lot to get started? For example, the Wii gadgets you use. Um... It doesn't have to cost a lot of money, but it can cost a lot of money. It, it just depends on um, on how elaborate you want to get with it. If you do other crafts, I highly suggest you use supplies you have from your other crafts first and then, um, you know, add to it. The big things you want to keep in mind is that acid free. So you want to buy cardstock that's acid free. Um, if you buy an album, oftentimes they'll come with cardstock in them and you could just work on that and, you know, decorate the, the white cardstock and stick your photos to that and call it a day. Um, packages of colored cardstock, assortment packs are a great way to get started and they're not very expensive. Uh, most of the big box stores will have their pattern, pa um, their cardstock on sale, like uh, Michael's and uh, Joann's have these multi-packs of different colors and you can you know get an assortment pack or if you know you only like neutrals you could just get neutrals that would probably be a good place to start and then um you know get a sheet of get a couple sheets of paper you don't need a lot and i would say the best advice would be not to spend a lot not to buy a lot because your taste will change and things will go out of style so i would be i would just be you know know what you like try a few things don't go crazy it doesn't have to be expensive cardstock, photos, that's really all you need. A pen to do your journaling. That's the important stuff. Everything else is just decoration. And if you do other hobbies like sewing, you can save tags, you can save buttons, um, use that stuff for embellishment. It'll look great. Kathy asks, um, will the wood have acid leach onto pages? Oh, that, you know what? That's a really good point. These are sold for scrapbooking, but I bet the wood would leach onto your uh, wood leach onto your photos. So here's something we can do. We can put it on, let's back it on some cardstock and that will give us a buffer so that we don't have to worry about that. So we won't have that direct, um, that direct contact. Good, uh, really good thought, Kathy. Good catch. And of course, these are all printed out digital photos, but still, I don't want my photos to turn yellow and have to redo it. I'll do it once and that's it. I'm not doing it again. I just know the chances of me redoing a uh, layout is very slim. Okay, so something else I thought would be kind of fun uh, is to use some stamping. Now I'm gonna show you my, let's glue the, I, I'll glue this one down because I know this is where I want it to be. Um, I like to add stamping and that's another affordable thing. Uh, stamping on its own, you know, stamping can get really expensive so I don't wanna like take anyone down a bad path, but um, stamping, is something that you can use over and over again. So you buy a set of stamps once and you can use it tons and tons of times, like especially something like journaling labels or frames or alphabets, you know, just pick something that's classic that doesn't look too decorative or trendy. And that's going to suit you well for quite a long time because you won't have to, you know, go buy another alphabet set because all of a sudden that font is so, you know, 2019 you can get something that's going to last you. Like a typewriter font is always, you know, it's classic. It always looks good. You know, go with basic fonts like that. You can always use your computer fonts too. So you don't have to have stamps if you don't want to. But um, something that I really like are just like kind of basic stamps. Like this is a library card. And I thought that would be really cute to tuck in the pocket there. I think I will go ahead and glue this down. Um, I think I'm going to have to go with a skinnier double-sided tape. I'll use the score tape, which is also acid-free. Carmen asks, do you use any of your electric cutters to scrapbook? I do. Um, I'm not today because that if I was going to use them today, I would have pre-done them. 
and had the die cuts all ready to go. Look, I have these uh, die cuts all ready to go. But yeah, absolutely, um, especially for titles because I used to do letter stickers a lot, but I would always like end up with these random letters left over that I couldn't use and spell anything. So like I'd buy a pack of letter stickers and I'd be lucky to get one or two titles or one or two scrapbook pages out of it before um, I'd have to either mix and match my letters and do like a ransom style title or just chuck them because I couldn't spell anything. And with your die cutter, you can just type it whatever size you want cut it out of whatever paper you want. So yeah, definitely. But it is a pricey investment. So I probably wouldn't recommend it to a brand new scrapper unless they're absolutely sure that they want to do paper crafting as a long-term hobby. Otherwise, you know, a couple sticker sheets would be cheaper. You know, figure out if you even like, like it before you do that. But yeah, I totally use my electronic cutters. Another question is, what's a good affordable scan and cut machine? I have, and I can only speak to the one I have, which is the model um, CM350. It's a Scan and Cut 2 CM350, and I really like that machine. It, um, oh, where did I have that? I'm trying to remember. Um, I like that. It does everything I need to do, but I'm just using it for scanning and cutting. So I stamp something, and then I put it through the machine, and it cuts it out for me. Um, it's, it doesn't have a really big learning curve, but it also does a lot more than what I do. But I just, I have an old um, Cricut that I hook up to my computer, and I cut things that way when I need to use that. The um, the Cricut that I have, I don't, I no longer support that company because they, um, I don't know, I think they did some pretty sleazy dealings in the past and, um, and I'm not, I don't wanna purchase any of their products anymore. You can do whatever you want, but I have to say those original machines still held up really well. And I use my old Cricut Expression with a software called Scal2. You might be able to find a version on eBay, a physical disc to buy on eBay, but they bullied that company along with a couple other companies to stop selling uh, software that would cut, allow you to cut what you want from your machines. So um, luckily I got that software before the embargo happened and um, that's what I use. So anytime I want to design an SVG file or cut a clip art or cut one of my computer fonts, that's what I use. And it also conserves my mats and blades for my scan and cut because the, um, the mats and blades can be more expensive. Uh, Melissa asks, what does a scan and cut machine do? And can you put pictures in it and cut it out or it just dies? Um, you can put whatever you want in it to cut it out, but it's going to cut out things like, um, like if I, well, if I put a photo in like this, it had a really distinct border and I said I wanted to cut it out with a border, it probably could find the edges and cut around it, but it's best for like, if you have a large stamp collection like I do, like I could put this, um, uh, this is really easy to cut out, so I'm just cutting it out by hand, but I could put this in my machine and it would cut around the perimeter. I could either have it cut right on the line or have it cut like a border, however big and or small I want. And the reason I like it is because I think I paid about 250 for the machine because I got it on Black Friday and I have so many stamps. So basically I have dies for every stamp I own now and I can say whether I want a border on that cut out or if I want a... Um, if I want it to cut right on the edge, because when you buy physical dies, for one, they're expensive and they're only going to cut one way. So that way you have all that versatility and for one price. So, you know, I can have still have cutouts for all my dies, but I never have to spend another penny on it. So I like that. It's a it's kind of a big upfront investment, but it's um, it's a smaller investment as time goes on. I like that, but it's not enough contrast. Let's try that. Ooh, that works right there. Well, that's my, that's why I, I purchased the machine. I figure like die sets cost between, you know, 10 and, you know, $30 a piece. So after, you know, 10 to 20 die sets, you've paid for the machine. Okay. Oh yes, and I had a little label, but maybe I want to use that color label. That uh, let's see, I had a red one. I don't know which one I like better, the red or the teal. I think I like that. All right, I am going to stamp the year on this, 2020. I might not know what the day is these days, but I know what the year is at least. And I'm gonna find some letter stamps. Just be a second. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> 
that's the thing with scrapbooking. I never know exactly what I'm going to need while I'm looking at a page. So, uh, let's see. Hopefully, I have some alphabets in here. Oh, you know, yes, I do. I can do. I can use this typewriter alphabet. I think I got a two, an O. Oh, I just need a two and an O, really. But this is the number, the number zero. The other one was the letter O. Another question: Will Scan and Cut work on intricate or lacy designs? Um, Scan and Cut. There, there is, if you're really considering getting a skin and cut, I recommend Julie Faith and Balzer's YouTube channel. She is a skin and cut spokesperson and she has all these uh, tutorials on how to get these different looks with your machine. Um, you can, it's best for cutting the perimeter of something, like the outline of something, um, but you can cut the innards as well, but you have to do, um, you have to scan it a couple times and you got to save you've got to save it and then you've got to merge the design together. I haven't really, I've done it once to cut out a wreath and for me it was just way more, uh, way more fussing than I wanted to do when I craft. Um, but you can do that. I wouldn't recommend it for like lace, like if you're scanning and cutting like a lacy stamp, I wouldn't recommend it for that, but I'm sure it could cut that. You would just need like a, you need a file of it to cut which you can, you know, hook that to com your computer and cut whatever you like, um, just like you can with any die cutter. I haven't done that personally. I just scan and cut. Oh, can we sneak that one on there? I think so. There we go. It's not perfect, but it's fine. Oh, you know what would look cool? I think if I cut out the middle part of this and stuck it on to that, so I have a red frame on that, I think that would look really cute. So I will cut that out by hand. And there's other scanning cuts. There's, um, I just have like, mine's like a kind of like a, a cheap version. There are more intricate, more expensive versions that might suit you better. Actually, you know what? I think, I wonder if I have a scrap of that paper because I could do that better. I could stamp that better. Oh, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Oh, I can't take it. I gotta get every stamp that. <laughs> I'm going to trace this and restamp it. And then cut it out. Gosh, you think I'd have a pen in this joint. Lila, can you pass me a um maybe like a teal double-ended marker? This good? Uh yeah, I think that'll work. Good. I was gonna say a water-based one, but I think this will be fine. Okay. And I don't recommend you work right on top of your layout when you are doing something like this. feel wet like that marker had something on it. <laughs> Maybe it was leaking. Uh, I'm gonna stamp. Stamp before you cut. There's a tip. It's easier to it's easier to stamp first. So I want to scooch that right over to oh shoot I didn't scooch it over the edge enough this time either. You know what? I'm gonna stamp it and then I'm gonna cut it out. 2020 that's the year it is. <laughs> I was signing my name on a painting and I, I wrote 2002 and it's like, what? <laughs> uh, where's that? I need to, yeah, I think I can eyeball it. It'll become very apparent why I own a scan and cut once you see me cut a few things out. It's very difficult to cut something straight. How wide do I want that? Okay. Hopefully this will be somewhat straight. Always cut it a little bit bigger and then you can sh you know, kind of shear off the excess. Okay, the edges look good. I need to cut the top and bottom a little bit more.
I think the best tip for scrapbooking is if you can find a scrapbooking crop or group around to attend those because they really do inspire you. And, you know, knowing you have to go somewhere, um, you know, the, you're not going to be interrupted and you'll, you know, be excited to go and share because you'll meet people and, um, and make friends and you'll get inspired by each other's work. And plus just making that date with yourself to go somewhere really helps you get your scrapbooking done. That's why I haven't done much scrapbooking over the last couple of years because the, the group I used to meet with um, stopped meeting. So that would be one of my biggest tips to get more scrapbooking done. It used to be that like people didn't, it was very an oddity for somebody to have a room de dedicated to scrapbooking or their hobby. And it seems like once people started having scrapbooking rooms, they stopped going like to stores to crop and um, like schools and churches and things like that to crop. And I think it kind of started the decline of scrapbooking as a hobby. I think I have the wrong swatch on this ink pad. I thought I had brown, but it's actually black. All right, do we have any other questions? I think this is just about done. I haven't done the journaling. I'll do that um, in my own time because I'm a very slow uh, writer. Uh, but what do you guys think? Does this look done to you? Any, any? It's going to take a minute, right? Oh, that's right. We got a 30 second delay. I keep forgetting. The little scallop's kind of pretty, I kind of think. Well, maybe I'll cut out a little bit of the scallop and add that. Now, something like this would be difficult to cut in the skin and cut because there's not a lot of contrast between the green and the cream. But if this was scallop was like red or black or something really bold, you could cut that out on your skin and cut machine probably. But I mainly just use it for stamping images and, and um, cutting. I have found that the blades have gotten a lot cheaper recently on Amazon, they used to be about uh, 10 bucks for one blade, but they, I've seen them down under $5 a blade. So that's kind of exciting because I used to use my, I used my Cricut a lot more for, uh, for stuff just because the blades were a lot cheaper for a Cricut. Let's see, do I want that in there? Hmm. Well, I kind of like that. Do, who do we have for moderators today, Lila? Have you noticed? I thought um, you said yeah, Joe. There's... Joey was here? No. <laughs> oh, no? Actually, yeah. yeah. Joe's here. And Ian. Oh, Ian, wonderful. Joe and Ian. And that's all I've seen. Cool. Like just nice to see some regulars. I didn't know because I know most of my moderators are painters um, rather than crafters, so I didn't know how many would. If you can carry a theme across pages, that's also really good. It just... Um, Oh, that would be kind of cute. You could put like a little, a little uh, crown on Lila here with this little scallop <laughs> crown. Mm, that's cute, but oh, I think I'll put that right up there. I like to carry themes across pages. Uh, it doesn't have to be really fancy. It doesn't have to have a lot of embellishments. It's really, you know, preserving the memories. That's, that's the important part. Question? Yes. Where'd you get your scissors? These? Oh my gosh. Um, I think I got these at Nancy's Scrapbooking back in the day. They're Cutter B um, micro tip scissors. Now they have ones that are like non-stick. I don't have those. I'm not that fancy, but I have a couple pairs of these and I really like them. They seem to stay sharp for a long, long time. And I do sharpen them in a little Fiskars uh, sharpener, but they stay really sharp and I've used them daily for the last, like, I don't know, 16 years or so. Actually, it's yeah, 17 years. I started scrapbooking when Jackson was born, and I've been using these scissors ever since the first crop I went to. All right, I'm going to call these done. We're at, it's 343. Rather than starting a new layout, I think we will make some cards with our scraps. So I have got some card bases. I just took some craft cardstock. I took two pieces of craft cardstock and I chopped them in half and folded them in half. And this is the Park Lane paper from Joann's. I like their craft cardstock. The other heavyweight cardstocks, I prefer the Recollections from Michael's because the color's just a little bit nicer and it feels a little bit thicker. And it's the paper seems a little bit smoother and harder sized. So it just, it just gives me a nicer finish, I think. But um, 
but I just, uh, we don't have Michaels around here right now, so I bought some of the Park Lane from Joann's for the cream and white, and I'll use that up before I restock. But just in case you have the choice between two stores, I love the craft from Joann's, but get the cream and the white from Michaels if you have that option. Um, all right, so let's see. We've got these different header strips. I have, do not have anything planned here, guys. I've got stamps. Well, uh, I got a couple of these that I cut out. I've got some leftover die cuts here. We're using up our leftovers because we want to be responsible, crafty citizens. Uh, I've got my book of school themed rubber stamps. I sort my my uh, stamping supplies by theme and binders. So this binder is calendar, frames, school, and baseball. So it might seem random, but those those tend to be actually um, things I scrapbook with. So that's why they are all together. And oh, this is a nice one. This is like a notebook page. I will put that on the block. Oh, we got an ABC. I like that too. I'll often like just double mount my stamps when I am working like this. Mm. Let's go right ahead and start stamping. Actually, I got something. This is a thing. Try not to get overwhelmed with your stuff. If you find something that's going to work, just go with it and try not to get all um, all bogged down. Actually, I'm going to try some Distress Oxide ink. I say pick what you have the closest to you, but then I've got to go across the room and get something else because uh, I recently cut the little nubbins off these drawers so that I could take them out and use them. Not have to try to like fish these out of a drawer. It's so much easier when I can flip through. I'd like to store these on their sides, but I know they say they can be stored on their sides, but I've had them leak, so I don't store them on my side on their sides. I know I have like an opaque green. So I'm gonna go for that as well if I can find it. Ah, peel paint. There you go. It's red and green. I love red and green because they remind me of apples and first day of school and all of that jazz. And Distress Oxide is opaque. So it should show up on this craft card stock. All right. Mm, clear stamps usually don't need as much cushion for them to stamp well, but since I have this here, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Someone said Maisie looks like a Hollywood movie star. <laughs> I think both of my girls do. Let's see. Let's just put some of this background into these cars. I've been making happy mail recently, which is just, you know, kind of making up batches of cards to send off to friends and family who can't visit right now during the whole coronavirus, which you can mention coronavirus on YouTube now and not get your, not get demonetized. Every time I say coronavirus, it's like I'm saying Voldemort or something. People are like, you can't say the name. I'm not worried that this is kind of grungy because um, I'm going to do some other inking. This is all background. Sometimes it's better just to do it rather than to do it perfectly. Just get it done. Have fun. Get it done. I think it'd be cool to have maybe like some stars or something. Uh, I could do some stenciling or it might actually have a star background here. Got some stars there. I can grab a stencil. I keep my stencils in a big bin. This is just one of those like 12 by 12 bins that go into those like cubbies. Um, you know, the cubbies you can get at like Home Depot or Target. Ah, stars. I knew I had stars. And, oh, navy. Navy blue is a good color. And we'll go back to the first one that we stamped because that one will be a little bit drier. Now the Distress Oxides are neat because you can, um, uh, let's see, I should get a sponge. You can um, spray them with water and they get lighter and kind of uh, crusty looking. So I'm going to do that. Um, question. Yes. Jessica asks, when st with stamping, is it better to dab, dab it on like that than rather than rubbing it? 
Um, it really depends. I noticed like with the felt pads, uh, not so much these. If you have like a drier felt dye base pad, I find that kind of like rubbing it and then tapping it, you get a better result. The foamy ones, if your pad's a foamy pad, just kind of lightly, gently tap it because you'll get a really uniform result. It just really depends on what you have. Okay, I'm going to do some stars on some of these. So we're going to do this to pretty much all of them. Again, this is background, so don't freak if you get a smudge and it doesn't look that great. I make my little daubers by taking a makeup wedge and folding it in half and hot gluing it inside a chest piece or a bottle cap. My Distress Oxides are in chest pieces and my regular dye ink sponges are in bottle caps. And to me, they work just as well, actually better than the, um, the store-bought ones. Maybe it's just because I've used them more and they're more saturated with ink, but I've had much better luck with these than with the store-bought uh, blending sponges that you can buy. And you probably have some makeup wedges, even if you don't have anything else. It's been really invigorating, kind of like use, just using what I have and not, you know, knowing that I just can't run out to the store and buy something or order something and have it here um, quickly. It's been, it's been kind of fun to, you know, have less on my calendar and just be able to play and, you know, use what I have. After using an ink, you will need to clean your stencil, um, which you can do by spraying and, you know, smushing it on another piece of paper and you can use that background for something else. Uh, the reason I don't, my stencils look so messy is I don't clean them after acrylic ink, but I do, or after acrylic paint, but I do clean them after ink. Otherwise this will transfer onto my next project and I might not want blue ink on my next project. Someone asked why you can't say coronavirus. Because everyone was saying that, um, well, it used to be if you, people were putting up all these videos about coronavirus kind of scaring people for views so that they could get like ad dollars. And um, so YouTube was going to not let ads run on any coronavirus videos. So it would um, not encourage people to make videos about that. Um, but they realized that, you know, it's part of life right now and everyone is talking about it. So they, they decided to change their tune a little bit. Um, maybe I'll just do a little bit of... Oh, isn't that color pretty, guys? Look how good that stands out. It looks so much nicer than my little swatch on the side of the, of the thing. Hey, Lila, can you pass me that lined paper behind you, that scrap? Thanks. That way you don't get, yeah, you don't want to get ink on those foam pads and, and just fun foam will work just fine. This happens to be um, a Carabelle Studio stamping pad, but it's just a thick piece of foam. A fun foam, craft foam will work just fine for that. It just gives you a little bit of um, cushion underneath your work as you're stamping so your stamp can marry the paper really well. And um, uh, But if you get ink on it, it won't dry and then you'll get it smudged on your next project. So try to like throw a scrap paper on top or a magazine sheet or something like that. Um, question, what's yes. special or different about distressed oxides? Distress oxides are, um, they're an ink that is reactive with water, just like your regular old distress ink, but, um, they're opaque. They've got a pigment to them. So they, they show up on dark color. And when you spray them, instead of getting darker where you've sprayed them, well, they're actually regular distress ink would get, would get lighter when you, when you sprayed them and blotted them. They just have a different, a different look to them. Um, they kind of look like, you know, how metal gets kind of oxidized and white where like, um, where it starts to oxidize and rust. That's kind of what this does. Oh, that's the appearance that it gives. I had a big spray bottle under here and I don't know what I did with it. I think this might be water. Hmm. Doesn't smell like anything, so it must be water. Ah, I see a spray bottle over there. Yes, thank you. Question, do you have to heat set distress oxide? Um, no, you don't, but you might want to do like, um, a little bit of glaze on top of them. I should actually start with this one here that I did first. Uh, you might want to do, and what I found actually, I found a really cheap, uh, cheap fix instead of micro glaze. Um, so micro glaze is basically a wax that you can put on top of distress ink or any other thing that, um, could be damaged with water. So like if you were making a postcard or something and you want to mail it off and you're afraid it was going to get get wet and messed up. Um, 
I found that like the the wax the chalk paint wax you can use pretty much the same exact way I was just experimenting that with a card today uh, that video will be up next week or the week after for, it was another happy mail batch card that I was doing and I was making postcards and I waxed them and they worked really good actually I've got them somewhere I just oh I'll grab them remind me to grab those cards and show them to them I'll show them what the wax looks like okay it, it actually brightens the distress oxide color too which is nice because I prefer a brighter color And actually, probably if you misted the whole thing, it would kind of lock the color down, but um, then it would also lighten everything. So you probably wouldn't want that. It looks nice to have some of the colors lightened and some of them darker. So now I am going to blot these off. Can you pass me a paper towel? Thank you. Oh, this is really fun. I have no idea how these cards are going to come out. I don't really know what I'm going to put down next on them, but... I don't think I've actually used this ink on this paper before, so I'm not sure what sort of effect I'm going to get. But it's just background, so... Let's see how it gets a little bit whiter there? That white pigment ink just kind of raises to the surface that's in those the Distress inks. Kind of just gives you a little bit of um old-timey look. This one could actually use a little bit more. Because I like that, that effect so much, but I didn't have enough on there paintbrush would work a lot better for speckling water on, but I didn't have any buckets of water open. Let that one sit. What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does anyone know, or probably, yeah, do you, uh, do you know of a really good pigment ink that comes mini or, or like the dew drops? And she says she only sees whites and blacks. Yeah, Colorbox just went out of business. They probably made the best, but um, the little dew drop size, those are made by Sukuniko, I think, is a company. It's Versa Magic, I believe, is the is the name. And let's see, Versa Fine used to have. I think they have little. Um, what? Just so so many questions are always at the same time. Oh, uh, um, Versa Fine. Go Versa Fine has cubes and go to Rubber Stamp Tapestry. They're awesome folks over there. Um, I'm sure they would really appreciate your business and they sell all the cubes. You will not be disappointed and they've got good prices too. So, and if you join their mailing list, which I do not have that information in the video description, but if you join their mailing list, um, they offer coupons frequently. So, um, so go check them out. Rubber Stamp Tapestry. It's pegstamps.com. They have so many little cubes of pigment and regular dye ink. You will be very pleased. What's the next question? Um, do the distress oxides move when wet? Yes, they do. They reactivate. They get light and they would run around. If I like sprayed it and let it run, it would totally move. Also, should you heat set all inks, including India inks? Um, you heat set pigment inks generally because um, otherwise they don't dry. And you want to heat set inks if you're on a glossy surface or a coated cardstock surface. So if you've got a paper that's got a little sheen to it, your ink probably will not dry very well. So you want to heat set those or heat emboss them. All right. So let's see. Let's grab some paper here. Um, I like the little torn edge. So let's glue some of that down. I like the way that looks. Um, put some glue right on the card, I think. Um, Annie wants to know if they can send you art in some way. Um, you can email me a photo at um, artstudiosofbangor at yahoo.com if you want to share your artwork. I don't have a P.O. box at this time. Or you could tag me if you're on Instagram and you post it on your Instagram account. You could tag me, tag the Frugal Crafter. Now, generally, I would be trimming this with a trimmer, but I'm just doing it with scissors to save some time. Um, Nancy asks, where do you get your peg stamps from? Um, Pegstamps.com. That's rubber stamp tapestry. All my peg stamps are from them, unless they're super duper old and they're from, like, rubber stampede or something, which I don't think they make peg stamps anymore. Ooh, I think that would look really cool. Let's do that. These would be fun uh, cards to send to a teacher. The teachers are working so hard these days to educate the kids um, online. That would be really, really nice to send to a teacher. Peg stamps are a great way to get into stamping because there's... Um... Oh, that's really... I didn't realize how bright that color was. Um... 
because you know they're they're less intimidating they're you know they're simple they come usually with a couple coordinating things and it's just a lot less uh, stuff to stress about all right i'm going to do a few more just start off a few more cards and then i'll look at my stamps and see what i can do to embellish it'll be a little quicker to do it this way um Do the same thing with that. Why not? We don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. If anybody has any stamping techniques they want to see, uh, if I could work it into this uh, this live stream, just let me know. And if it's something that's not too elaborate that I can just grab a few supplies, I can show you because I will. I mean, I'm going to do some stamping on this card on these cards. Do you want me to type your email into the chat because someone... Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. I thought I had it in the um, in the video description, but somebody checked and said I didn't. I, I had to go weed some stuff out because I couldn't fit as much stuff as I wanted to fit. You're limited to how many words you can have in the video description on YouTube. Hmm... Oh, that's pretty, but there's not enough contrast, but I do like that. You know what? Maybe it would be enough. I don't know. Um, is there a code too. that they can use to get credit for setting, for you setting them to peg stamps? Um, there might be a comment box and you could just say, Lindsay sent me. Um, but if actually, if you go on my YouTube channel and look for the last time I used the peg stamp video, there may be a coupon code in there for you. I usually... Lin I think it was like Lindsay, but it might have been Lindsay something. Um, but there's anyway, there's a link for you to sign up for the mailing list to get um, coupon codes and stuff too. Also, but, oh sorry. Oh, I was just saying, any of your any independent stamp companies would really appreciate your business during these times. I've heard from so many that are really struggling. So if you've been meaning to make purchases on any of those independent shops, they will they will surely appreciate it question when you add raised elements to your cards do they cost more to mail them it really depends on how raised they are um i haven't had much issues as long as i haven't had them too heavy like if i put a button on a card it's usually fine you can put a piece of cardstock like an extra piece of cardstock over your card just so it doesn't get caught in machines but if i like i did a one card once i don't know if kathy's still here or not but i uh she received one of my cards posted to do once it was a, I had a tree and I had filled the top of the tree with buttons and so it made the card heavy and then everybody that got this invitation or I don't know I think it was a thank you note um after a birthday party got like their thank you note posted to do so they had to pay to actually get their thank you card which I was mortified about but um oh I think that's gonna look good like um that. two different people said it's either one fourth inch thickness and one another person said one eighth Oh, First you know, I had this thing. Oh, you know, I think I have it right behind me, actually. It's like a little guide from the um, the company Green Sneakers, and it's got a slot in it. I think you can get them from the... Um, oh, I can't see it right now. I think you can actually get them from the post office, and it has like a little... It's a guide that has some slots cut into it, and you can see if your, if your card will fit. And if it fits, then you're good. If it's If it doesn't fit, then you got to pay an extra whatever. But I think it's like one ounce, and I know they don't like to, there to be big jumps in thickness. If it's fairly smooth, I think the machines can handle it. Question. Can yes. you show us how to make a 3D card? A 3D card. Like, there's a lot of 3D cards. I would need some more information. Probably not on this live stream, because I would... Uh, any really elaborate cards, I have to edit, because there's just so many times... So many... Um, so much wasted time where I'm, you know, fiddling with different things. I'm just going to go right ahead and stick that down. You know, another tip would be to die cut extras. When you're die cutting stuff, just die cut a few extra while you're at it because um, oftentimes you can use those in other projects and it just saves a lot of time. Oh, I like that too, but I think I like the puffy heart. And I think I'm going to add a button to that. Yes, let me glue that down. Let me get a white button. Get my jar of white buttons. Oh my. <laughs> I can get that for you. 
Yeah, I probably should have had you do that. I just thought I can grab it quicker. Sometimes explaining where things are in this room or is uh, takes a lot a lot longer than actually just running and getting them. I don't like that one. You can cut buttons off clothing before you toss them away. If like say they're not good enough to donate and you can save them and they are wonderful for embellishments because they have a little character to them because they might be a little um, kind of crusty and old and funky looking. And my mason jar buttons there. And they look pretty. They look pretty when they're on display in your craft room or on your you know, bookshelf or whatever, wherever you craft, wherever you keep your supplies. This is just some, this was a scrap of felt that I just, I had done a project and I had a, some felt left over, so I just grabbed my dies and, and die cut a few extras. Was there another question? No. Uh, put a couple buttons on there, I think. Yeah, don't get too fussy about your crafting. I mean, there's so many beautiful cards online. I know it can get kind of overwhelming to see those gorgeous creations and think that everything you do has to look like it, you know, belongs in a magazine, but it doesn't. You know, the important thing is that you have fun and that you're sharing, you know, you're sharing with people you care about. That's what scrapbooking is all about and card making. Oh, I think I should have just left it with one button, but two would just be weird, so... I'm going to put three, because it looks like eyeballs. There's a question. I don't know if I really understand it, but it says, I want to send more snail mail to my nieces and nephews right now. Especially, question, what is not lame to 10 and over? What is not lame to 10 and over? I think you should answer that. What would be cool? So she's got she's got nie nieces and nephews that are 10 years old and older, so tweens and teens. What kind of card would you like to receive? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I feel like everyone's different. Yeah. Um... Well, you wouldn't think it was lame anyway, would I, you? No, I wouldn't. I think I think anything would be fine, and they would appreciate it. Yeah, especially if they have interests. If you know their interests, you yeah. could... Um, like if they like a certain animal. Right. Or even like if they're a fan of a certain movie. Wow, that glue is already set up. That's how fast that Beacon 3-in-1 sets up. It's already grabbing. Um, is your critique club on your blog? Yep, if you go to um, if you go to my blog, look on the left hand side. If you're on desktop, um, you'll see that there. Also, there's a link in the video description under the video um, that says like for more classes, visit you know lindsaywire.teachable.com, and that will take you to the main page of my Teachable School. And there is uh, you can see all the classes I offer there. And if you use the coupon code NOFOOLIN, you can save 50% off any class through the month of April. So if you are looking to, to get some art training, you can check that out. Now this would be a good place to like tuck a little card in. I'm just going to set this aside for now and see if I can think of something to do with these other cards. We can come back to that when we're ready to do some more stamping. Question, is the t is your tape holder the same one that you've had for years? Yeah, it is. It is. It's so funny. Sometimes it's really awful and squeaky, and sometimes it's it behaves very well. I, I just never know what I'm, you know, I never know what I'm going to get with that thing. Today it behaves. Pretty much. I mean, you could, well, oh, yeah, now it's squeaking. I, it was just behaving, I swear. I just used it on some cards, and it was not squeaking, and now it's squeaking. To spite me. It's a spiteful tape roller. <laughs> it's it's protesting because I use the the cheap tape. I won't give it the, you know, the name brand Scotch refills. My, uh, actually, I don't know if she's in the chat or not, but Val, my friend Val um, Martin, Valerie Martin, gave me that tape runner because I was like, oh no, I'm not. I don't need that fancy tape runner. I'm fine with what I have, and she mailed me one. Oh, that was such a sweet gesture. Oh, maybe I'll use, hmm, I kind of wish these were like, these went the other way, because I don't feel like that works well with that, with that orientation. I 
think it's so much more fun to use up your scraps and make some cards rather than have to put these away. Like rather than filing them when you're done. It can be a great way to boost your creativity because these are scraps or leftovers from another project. So you're not wasting something that's precious. And you can kind of, we can kind of feel sometimes that we're just, you know, we're wasting precious supplies and it has to be perfect, especially if it's a paper we really like. But if we're, you know, doing something like this, they're essentially all leftovers. So you might as well use them up. Another question. I think you've yes. answered it, but where do you get the tape runners? Um, the machine itself can be found on Amazon. I think that's probably the cheapest price, but the refills I get from Tape Depot, but I think Amazon actually sells refills now, um, like packs of 12. So that's probably a better, a better option for most people because, you know, we probably don't need 144 rolls, but I got mine from Tape Depot and I think I paid about a dollar 12 a roll. And I split a big, a big pack with friends. I think I might use this kind of like a little photo corner and put something that I stamped on there. So I'll set that aside till I figure out what I want to add for stamping. Did I do all the backgrounds? I'm only seeing three cards. Oh, let me do that one. Question, how yes. small of a scrap do you use slash save and when do you throw it out? Um, it really depends on how precious the paper is. If it's not something that I'm really crazy about, um, if I don't think I'm going to use it, I just would get rid of it. But generally, I would say probably like three by four would be the smallest I would save. Unless it was something that I just knew I would use. It was something smaller that was just so cute that I knew I would just put it on my next card. And I would probably just leave it in a little dish like this on my table so that I wouldn't forget I had it. I keep all my scraps in hanging file folders in one of those back to school crates that you can find at Target or Walmart at back to school time. They look like a big milk crate and um, they work great with hanging file folders but, and I divide my scraps by color. Ooh, I could fit one goatee on there, but I don't think it really works with the scallops. 307 people watching. Holy cow, that's awesome. Yeah. The stream's 72 minutes long. Oh, wow. Wow, I'll try, I'll wrap, I'll try to wrap this up pretty quick, guys. I'm not thinking, I, I think that scallop is not working all that great. Unless I turn the whole thing. You know what, we can do that. We can turn the whole thing. Let's do that. Let's make this a little bit. There's no rule that says our letters have to go the right way. We can have our letters sideways. Oh guys, tell me what your favorite scrapbooking or paper crafting tool is in the, uh, in the chat. I would love to know that. I think mine is probably um, either my hot glue gun or my acropodile. I said no. <laughs> well, Tracy said no need to hurry. It's not like we have somewhere to be. Oh, seriously, guys. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> We're all on house arrest. I heard that uh, the cell phone companies were re were telling the government how much people have been leaving their homes, which kind of freaked me out. I'm like, what? But like, they have that data. They can tell. Um, they can tell how how often you leave your home. Oh, I gotta get the decorative edge scissors out because I, I I gotta prove that I actually still have them and use them. I keep them in a bucket. And I think this is a good deco edge scissor opportunity. So I keep them all here because sometimes you just need a fancy edge. And let's see, deco, that's a fave, but I think, I think I want a zigzag, like a pinking or a scallop. But I do not get rid of stuff. You know, I find that everything comes back and it may come back in the form of you buying like a set of dies that would give you these edges, but I find these to be just as, um, just as handy.
Was there another question, Lila? Did I miss that? Nope. Anybody reporting on their favorite scrapbooking tools? Not yet. Really? Oh, yes, actually. Um, someone said the Vegabond die cut machine. Oh, I don't have that. That's an electric one. I've, I've been curious about those electric machines. I'm still using my old teal Big Shot. It's still, uh... It's still going strong. Where am I pinking? There's um, corner rounder and ATG and Fiskar trimmers. Fiskar trimmers. ATG. This is the ATG. Well, that is a good one. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm going to go with these poster judge ones, I guess, since I don't see my zigzag ones in here. Misty for scrapbooking and card making. I don't have one of those, but I was just doing a video and it's going to show up next week. It's going to be the one that I just referenced earlier about the, using the wax. Um, I use the old letterpress, uh, letterpress thing that um, goes with a die cutter so that you can like use those letter pressing plates in your die cut machine. I use that as a Misty and it worked brilliantly. And I've never felt like the need to have one, but I was making a batch of, um, of cards using layered stamps. And if you've ever used layered stamps, you know how aggravating and fiddly and frustrating and tedious they are. So I wanted to make, but I wanted to use them because they're so pretty. I, I need to let enough time pass that I forget about how tedious they are and how much I don't enjoy using them. But anyway, I used the Aww. letterpress thing and it worked great. What's up? Kathy said my favorite crafting tool is my friend, Frugal Craft. Oh, Kathy! <laughs> Aww. Aww. Now, now I'm going to cry. <laughs> I miss Kathy. Can you sit and have tea back before the world closed? Uh, yeah, I'll stick that. I pretty much covered up my background, but that happens sometimes. You know, you just you end up covering up all that stamping you do on the front. But, you know, well, how long to take? Like three seconds? It's, you know, it's fine. Uh, oh, yeah, I wanted to do... You tuck that under there and glue that heart. Oh, that doesn't really fit. Oh, but maybe it would fit if I did that. I kind of like that. It's not really a great design, but I kind of like how that looks. So I'm going to glue it down. you guys another question for you i wish i could put up like little poles um like i could just like wiggle my nose and have a little pole up here um do you print your photos at home or do you like get them printed at a drugstore or like send away for them because i've been printing mine at home and i haven't been very happy with my prints lately so i'd love to know and if you have a printer that you recommend please share that as well because i'm my printer is I think about 14 or 15 years old and it's yeah. on its last legs. Lots of people were saying that they really liked the Vegabond too. Oh, okay, neat. Something to think about when my when my big shot and, finally um, kicks misty. the bed. Misty. Those are popular. This <laughs> one's in Sharpies. Sharpies? Nothing wrong with a good Sharpie. Ooh, I think I want a tea. Um, most buttons. people are saying print at home. Print at home. Hmm. I think I want. I think I want a little heart bread on this or something. Oh, I can do some stamping on that. All right, I'm gonna look at my stamps now because I've glued down a lot of stuff and I think. Ooh, I think I want to add that to that one. Yeah, I'm going to put this one down here. I really like this terrible tape that is in, it's able to tear, not that it's terrible. It's literally terrible, not figuratively terrible. I have a few people saying um, that they go to their like, local store to print. Yeah. What does it cost to get photos printed away, like, at a store? It should be, like, 25 cents a piece. I don't know if that's high or that low or... 
Or what? It's been so long since I've had anything printed out. Um, there's a question. Have you tried Fomemo? Is that what? I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It's a printer. No, I have is it like a like a printer you send away to or a printer that you own and you and you have at your house. I think you own it because she said, "Have you tried Fo?" I feel stupid. I don't know Memo printer yet. I'd like one. No, I haven't. I haven't. Maybe somebody in the chat has tried it though. Is it? It must be like um, like maybe like a selfie printer, like one of those small ones that just that prints like the four by sixes. Maybe. Um, you can get I guess them printed at Walmart online and then mailed to you. Oh, that's a good idea. I used to actually, that's how I used to do my sister's because I would take a bunch of photos um, at family events and then I would send hers. I would just, yeah, send hers there and she could pick it up at her local Walmart. But I, don't, I can't remember the last time I printed anything for myself there. I remember taking my camera card back in the day and just like going there and having it printed. It would be so cute to have a little heart puppy sticker there. I wish I had a little heart puppy sticker. I think I have a little heart bread though. Lots of people are saying ours is too old. What's that? Printer. Our printer's still, yeah, yeah, I think it might be. It's I getting know, up there. It's improved. But you know, it really, it really has done well, I have to say. What's kept me using it so long is that I can get the generic inks. This is my bread storage. I'm looking for a heart bread. Um, is that I could get the, the generic inks really cheap on Amazon. So I would be able to get like a pack of five of the, it would be like a six pack of the six colors that it uses. And it would be like five or six bucks. It was so cheap that uh, that's what's kept me using that printer so long. And then I wouldn't have to feel like, you know, it was precious and I had to, you know, hoard my ink. Yeah, someone said 17 cents at Costco to print a four by six. How many cents? 17. Oh wow, that's really inexpensive. And the pictures from Snapfish online are very cheap as well. Hmm. Um, someone asked, is there affordable printer inks for photos? That's what I'm trying to get at. I'm really leaning towards an Epson because they have the ink tank system where you could put, um, I'm really use a star, where you can like hook these ink tanks onto your Epson printer and you know, you just re replace a tank so it's not as expensive as... Someone, Tracy says she has one. Oh, Tracy does? I just got an Epson EcoTank printer and I love it. Oh, is that my friend Tracy from real yeah. life? Oh, okay, Tracy, I'm going to have to pick your brain on that. Oh, that's good to know because I've been, I've been thinking that I would like something like that. Holly says, I don't know how much I pay, but my bill is reasonable. No more than $13 or so for a ton of photos. Oh, nice. And a few people have said Walgreens. Oh, good to know. Yeah, I've noticed, like, because I haven't scrapbooked in a while, and I've had my scrapbook stuff down here, just, like, stuff, photos ready to go. Oh, I like that. I think it's cute. Um, ready to go, and then I noticed some of the photos that I printed, the ink has, like, gone fuzzy. It's like the photos are fuzzy, so I'm not going to bother scrapbooking them. Um, and I was just thinking, maybe I should just order them. Plus, I don't really love the process of printing photos. Like, it just is so tedious. I would rather, like, back in the day, and I think that's one of the reasons we don't, a lot of us don't scrapbook that much anymore, is that it was so much easier back in the day when you would take your roll of film, drop it off at Walmart or Rite Aid or wherever you went, and picked it up the next day, and you got what you got, and that's what you scrapbooked. And there was no, like, looking for that perfect... Um, that perfect print or, you know, adjusting this and fiddling with that and, you know, altering this. You just, you got what you got and you were happy with it. And we liked it. Faltzio was talking about the Epson EcoTank. Oh, nice. Okay. People, everyone saying good things? Yep. Oh, good. Oh, well, somebody said theirs died right after the warranty expired. Oh, bummer. That stinks. Well, that, that's what happened to our the, that uh, photo printer we had, the HP, is that um, we had got it and it died right after the, because it was a Christmas present, so we, uh, my husband had bought it, but we hadn't actually used it, and um, then it was like a year later from the purchase time it died, but luckily in the state of Maine, we have the implied warranty law, and so that's like if you sell something in Maine, you have to agree that to replace it or repair it if it dies within its normal expected life. A lot of people don't know about that law, but it's fantastic. It's really saved us on a couple of big appliances. Um, and so they gave us a refurbished one and that refurbished one has lasted us, lasted us 15 years. I really want to make this star work, but I think it's too repetitive. Almost 400. 
kind of. Almost 400, holy. Kind of, there's 370. 370, that's awesome. That's funny, I didn't know if anyone would come to a scrapbooking one or a crafting one, I thought that, you know, it would be, I wish I cut that out of yellow, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna stop and cut something. I may I'll just leave that there and remind myself that I wanna cut it out of yellow. Or I could trace it on some paper that's yellow-ish. Do I have any scraps that are yellow-ish? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll revisit that off camera. Maybe, maybe cut that out of yellow. I'll probably just leave it the way it is because I'm not that picky. All right, now, I'm gonna do anything else with that. All right, I think it's time to look at our stamps and see if we want to add any stamping. I think I'll stamp out a couple library cards for those guys because I think those are really cute and I still should have that on a, um, yep, I got that right here on a block. Oh, something else. I've got this little note pad here for the inside of the cards because these craft cards, they're kind of dark. So if you stamp on, like if you stick a piece of paper in there and write on it, you've got a couple of benefits. One being that somebody can take that paper out and reuse the card and then mail it to somebody else. So I really like that. It makes your, um, your crafting go a little further. And um, Rubber Stamp Tapestry has a set of stamps that are all about recycling the card, like reusing the card, sending it to a friend, you know, taking out the, the card on the inside and sending it to a friend. Um, so if you are going over there to look at those mini ink cubes, I would also take a gander at that stamp set. Actually, I can show you. I got it right here. It's called, um, what's the name of it? It's, um, Handmade with Love and it has all these different, um, sentiments like, I was lovingly made, before you throw me away, you have my permission to re-gift me or tear me apart and rescue me to create something new. This card was handmade to be reused, remove this note and send me on to someone you love. Um, so it just basically gives people the idea to use the card again. And I think that's really nice. Okay, I am surrounded by supplies and I don't see my little thing of white scrap. Oh, here it is. I keep my scraps, like when I have white and cream scraps, I put them in this coupon organizer and that way whenever I'm like stamping, I have bunches of little, uh, you know, little scraps that are perfect for just stamping one or two things. So there's another tip for you. I hope these tips are helpful. Everyone say they like watching you. Oh, good. <laughs> you really love to compliments on the cards. Aw, thanks guys. Okay, well, I guess like, I could use pretty much any dye ink for this because this is going on the inside of the card. I don't know how well the Distress Ink is going to do on this cheap uh, clear stamp. This is um, really, really old. It's by, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of who this was by. It was um, from a craft store. It was very inexpensive. Um, I'm just doing these for the insides of the card so I have something to write on. Um, Maybe it was plaid? I don't know. Very inexpensive. But generally, distress inks do not work well on these stamps. But it's, it's fine for just to have something to write on, I think. Question, is there a clear library book card stamp? Oh, I'm sure there is. Just Google it. I'm sure I'm sure someone's got one. If they, I might even have one. I don't even know. Um, the one I have is by Technic Junkies. It's unmounted. But I'm pretty sure I've seen them in kit in like sets of like school themed stamps. Everyone's having fun. Oh, good. Hey, Lila, would you peek in that second drawer down and see if I have any school themed washi tape mm -hmm. or something that would go with these cards just so I can stick these little inner cards? School -themed. Yeah, anything school themed or vintagey. Lila is not looking at the screen right now, so any questions that you ask, well, if you could just keep your. Oh, so can... What's that? Um, cursive. Writing. Yeah, does it look like it would go with these colors? Hold on, I can't, <laughs> can't see. Uh, if it's a neutral, I think it'll be fine. I think these two look good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I'll use this newspapery one that will look good. So this is what I'll, what I'll do. I'll just stick in either a scrap of paper with a really light pattern on it, or I'll just a plain piece of cardstock or the back piece. Like if I've got a scrap, I'll flip it over. Like anyone's gonna, well, I guess they would look at the other side if they took it apart to, uh, but you know, unless you're sending cards to the queen of England, I really wouldn't worry about things too much. Um, can you repeat the name of the stamp set by 
by rubber stamp tapestry yes and again it's pegstamps.com is the website it's called handmade with love and uh, it's a clear clear stamp set so i just think it's really it's really cute and it's got a little like recycling a couple little recycling icons on there i'll probably stamp a little recycling icon on there because i don't have a lot of space to do the whole sentiment but um, a lot of people tell me they keep the cards that I send and I know I keep when somebody makes me a handmade card I keep it but I don't expect anybody to keep a card that I've made and if it's you know if it gets a an extra use out of it rather than going directly to the trash I would definitely prefer that because even though you know we use materials to make cards and you know people some people would say you know it's better just to send an email because then you don't have as much of a carbon footprint um i think that this is an instance where it's worth sending something physical especially if it can be reused but a lot of people keep it you know and i know scrapbookers that actually keep the cards and use them as decorations in their scrapbooks so oh this one goes the other way i don't know if i have room to put that in there uh, I think so. I'll trim it out a little bit. Or I could use... Hmm, I'll use this. Washi tape is fun because it kind of gives you a little bit of pattern, like a pattern paper would, on your card. The scale is perfect. And that way you don't have to have a bunch of pads of pattern paper or, you know, if you don't think you're going to use that much pattern paper, you know, you can have just a few rolls of tape that you like and get that little bit of pattern on a card or a scrapbook page. It's just another way to get the same look. So, and if you don't have washi tape and you like the look of that, then, you know, cut a little strip of pattern paper and put it in there. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just going to put a couple other. Well, I could just do a little stamping in there actually to fill the space what was the name of the stamp again uh I didn't type in the chat. hand made with love i had some people um ask me recently and i thought i'd mention it because this is uh i got a lot of clear stamps here um they a lot of people have asked me whether i've had stamps go gummy over time like uh some people had, have had issues where their stamps have kind of gotten stuck to the their backing sheet or they've just gotten really um, like uh, mushy and soft. And I think what does that, at least to the mushy and soft bit, I think that happens with um, with using or uh, having your stamps in like sunlight or ultraviolet light and since my stamps are all in binders and i work in the basement i don't have that issue um, with any of them and i know a lot of people have had the gummy stamp issue so that's what i think that's from in case you're having that issue and i don't, just wanted to mention it because i had some people ask me about that in the previous um video oh i like that i think i'll do that uh well maybe we'll, yeah i think i'll do that again in the navy i think that would look cute Faded jeans. I'm just going to offset it a little bit so I can fit them in there, kind of like stars on a flag. There. I think that's cute. Decorating the inside of a card is really fun too if you have the time and inclination. I think it's just a little something you don't expect. I really enjoy school theme stamps, so when I see certain themes, I definitely tend to grab them. This one's by October Afternoon. Probably most of the stamps I'm uh, actually, I guarantee, except for the rubber stamp tapestry ones I showed you, they're probably all um, retired. But, you know, there's always, you can always find something similar. So don't be discouraged if you can't find exactly what I'm using, or for that matter, if you can't find exactly what anybody else is using online. I know it's, it can be frustrating, but. Um, it's just going to be more unique when you find the thing that you absolutely love and you use that. Was there another question? I thought I saw you. I was dancing. Oh, cool. And anything could be a stamp mount. I just used the lid of this organizer. And taking things and putting them in threes is a good tip. Like, I one, two, three. You know, just having that, um, that third thing, it just kind of works for, for design. 
Works in design, works in comedy, works everywhere. Question, have you ever lost your favorite stamp? Or a favorite stamp? Oh, good question. I probably have. Let me see. Hmm. It's not coming. If if I have, it's not coming to mind. But it just it does seem like something like like that would that would happen. I have like I have had regrets of not buying something when you know when uh, when I had the chance, and then you know that's kind of similar. I don't think I've lost. I'm sure I've lost something and then been rejo then rejoiced when I found it again. I don't know if I, I don't think I've ever lost anything for good. Um, Two people have asked where you get your decorative breads. Um, Joanne's is a pretty good selection, or at least they used to, um, have a really good selection in store. Um, uh, I'm not sure about Michael's because we don't have one nearby and I don't remember what their situation is. I kind of think I want to add a little stamp on that one. Um, Paper Wishes, there was a catalog, Paper Wishes, I don't know if they still send it out a catalog or not, but they always had a lot of really nice brads that you could order. Hot off the presses, like, I wonder if I could stamp over, I'm going to try to stamp over all those layers, that might be a mistake, but I won't know unless you try. So since this is a detailed stamp, I'm going to try to get it to go over a couple layers of paper, I'm definitely going to use foam. Um, question? Yes. I love clear stamps, but have trouble getting them to stick to an acrylic block sometimes. How can I fix that? Wash them with warm soapy water and then let them air dry and they should stick. Wash your blocks too, because sometimes they'll get kind of greasy, like you've used um, like pigment ink or VersaFine uh, clear ink, and that just kind of makes them not want to stick. So just throw all those stamps and um, just be careful you don't lose them because they're going to be clear in the water. And your blocks and some warm soapy water, wash them up good and you'll be good to go. They'll work so much better. Also, when you're stamping, especially if you're not using a misty where you can't like restamp perfectly, um, just give time for the ink to transfer from your stamp onto your paper. Most people don't stamp long enough; they pull it up too quick. Have you ever purchased duplicate sets? Um, not stamp sets, but I have purchased. You know what? No, I take that back. I think I have purchased a du duplicate stamp set before, and I have purchased a duplicate embossing fo em embossing folder before. That is not a perfect image, but. Um, cool. Uh, but you know what? I'll show you how to fix that. Lila, can you pass me a black water base marker? One of the long ones on the uh, left hand side rack. Black? Yes. One? That should work. So when you have these large areas, especially on clear stamps, they tend not to want to behave. So all you do, especially with a large solid area, all these like fine details stamp just fine. I'm just going to go in and fill in this uh, on the blackboard here. And oh, Lila, would you grab me a white gel pen too? They're on the top. Uh, well, they're not the top of everything, but the top of like the alcohol marker rack, the top of the lower rack. Thank you. Welcome. Someone asked, um, how old were you when you um, discovered your love for crafts? Oh, I can't remember. I was so little. My mom did a lot of crafting and she would let me use her stuff. Um, I can remember my, one of my first crafts that I, to this day, despise, and it would be baking crystals where you have to, I don't even think they, they allowed this anymore because it's such a cruel craft to give to children. You have this like metal frame and all these little plastic pieces and you have to like with tweezers put these little plastic pieces inside these like little metal frames to like make Christmas ornaments and then you have to somehow get them into the oven without, because you work on like a baking sheet and you have to get them to the oven without dropping them or spilling them. And it's just an awful craft. That's one of the first crafting memories I have. But it, boy, would that keep a kid busy for a long time. For a homemade greeting card, how small would you make it? I do a lot of the, um, this size right here, which is half of a sheet of cardstock, it fold, folded, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. But I also do a lot of five by seven. So then you can just write little like um, things on the blackboard with a gel pen. I think that's kind of cute. Uh, but that just fixed all that messy stamping. I'm not going to worry about any of that because you can see that it's kids sitting in front of a blackboard. And I'm going to call that card done. Someone asked, what's the name of the Brad store 
that has all the different breads? Um, I believe the catalog was called Paper Wishes, and I think that they have a website. They must have a website. They used to have little episodes, little um, like uh, how-to videos as well. It was a cute little, cute catalog. It used to be one of those mini-sized catalogs. I really enjoyed, used to enjoy getting that catalog. Um, but they always had a lot of really nice brads. Uh, let's see, I want to stamp this out for two of the cards. I'm going to use my black ink. The Salon Fawn works a little bit better than the Distress for stamping. Distress ink is not the best for stamping. I mean, I'm using it here where I don't really care if I have a really um, crisp look. But you're better off for like doing stamping to get a ink pad that's designed for stamping and not for like special effects. Distressed inks are more for creating backgrounds and doing kind of like fun stuff. Like the Distress Oxides, I use them more like paint than an ink pad most of the time. Um, but for stamping, you're much better off to have like a, a legit stamping pad. And that could be like, like these Lawn Fawn, um, a lot of these, a lot of the different companies have these pads made by the same exact company. Um, Stampin' Up, Close to My Heart, any of those like ones that are really designed to be stamped with work the best for stamping versus like a special effects ink. Did we have another question, Lila? No. Hey, Lila, could you grab me that clear tray that's on top of that red card? I want to show the... Um, Using a wet, using the wax to preserve our postcards. I get asked all the time about sealing uh, postcards or sealing cards if you use distress ink. So distress ink, it's really fun for doing gorgeous backgrounds, but um, you know we spray water on it, we make those cool textures. They so that that ink doesn't really dry permanent. So you, if you want to protect, you know the re I, I I think if you're putting it in an envelope, you're fine. You don't really need to seal it or anything. But if you are going to send it as a postcard, if it gets any bit of a like a damp hand handling it or it gets a splash of rain on it, it's going to be affected. It might look better. It might look great, but it's definitely not going to be the same. So there is a product called Dorland's Wax, which is a little expensive. It's a like a paste wax you can rub onto artwork to preserve it. And there's Micro Glaze by um, Ranger or Judy Kins. Judy Kins is the maker of it. Um, that you can use, which again, it's a little on the pricey side, but it works great. Uh, but they, but then I experimented because I had a bunch left over of um, furniture wax and that worked really good too. And I'm just going to tuck this in there. Then I'll show you an example that I just played with. Um, I do not like to wax furniture, so I knew I was never going to use those containers and I was going to offer them to a friend who finishes furniture. But then I thought before I do that, well, let me see if I could actually use that for something that I currently have. Oh, I think that's cute. So these are the two with the library card locker things. Tim, that's a Tim Holtz die. It's current. You can find it. Um, I'll try to remember to go through and put the supplies in the video description, but I'm not that great at that. Uh, so I, I just questions. want to mention it. What's that? Fewer questions. Oh, okay. What are the questions? Um, what's some tips for using of old supplies that you've had for years, ribbons, twine, seeds, beads, etc.? Um, my tip would be get those products right out on your table, make yourself a kit so it's exciting. So like what I use, I'll show you right here. I use these bins. They're from the Dollar Tree. They are nine inches by 11 inches. They're meant for letters, like letter sheet papers. And what I will do is I throw those supplies that I want to use and then I go through my, my craft room. I shop my stash and I pick papers and stamps and things I think will go with it. And I put it in a bin and then um, I'll do that for a couple different things. I'll take you know a few of those items, I'll mix them with new products, make myself a little kit in the bin. And then when I come to craft, I'll just say, I'm going to take that bin. I'm just going to use what's in that bin. And that's how I do it. It works really well. And then it takes that thought process out when you're going to craft. So you don't um, waste time kind of wondering what to make. And I find that's a really nice activity to do when you're not feeling very inspired. Well, I want to show you the wax technique here. These, um, I had made, I was making a bunch of postcards to send out as happy mail. And I thought these were just a little too bland without anything um, else added. These are more of a coral flower. They look fuchsia kind of on my uh, my monitor, but I thought they were kind of bland and I wanted something in the background. Um, as it is, these are just regular dye inks, but they shouldn't be, they should be fine just the way they are. But I wanted to use Distress inks and I was worried that they would get um, 
get messed up in the mail. So what I did was I put on some furniture wax. This is an example of it. I used the Martha Stewart one, which is probably, oh, can you pass me that container right there? Um, these, uh, these little waxes, they come with a uh, chalk paint. I'll show you here what it looks like. It looks kind of like, um, uh, it almost, I wouldn't say it looks like a, well, it's kind of like a lotion. It definitely doesn't look like a Vaseline or something. It's a little runny. It's more runny than like micro glaze or, um, Dorland's wax, which m more has a Vaseline kind of thickness to it, like a matte looking Vaseline. Um, but I just kind of put it on in a thin layer. I dried it with my heat tool. You could let it air dry. And then I just rubbed it with a soft cloth and it made the colors a little bit brighter and um, it protects it against moisture. So if you're doing postcards or you just want to seal some work, I definitely would recommend it. I don't know about um, if it's acid free, it's wax. I can't imagine it would have anything in it that would hurt your artwork, but you know, just, you know, obviously it's not meant for fine art, but um, for postcards, I'm not worried about sending them out and having them damaged. But anyway, I just wanted to share that in case anyone had a question about sealing stuff like that cards. Is there another question? Yeah, there's a few. Okay. Um, off topic, but earlier I had a craft that has a pinwheel made out of folded paper, like a fan. When I glued it, it unfanned, and I don't know why. Okay, she made a pinwheel out of folded paper, like a rosette. I'm wondering if it was a rosette. I don't know. Probably, like the... Yeah, like a circle, yeah. like a rosette. Hmm, she glued it and it came undone. Well, it could have been the glue wasn't... Um, wasn't strong enough or like if I'm doing a rosette which is where you have the long accordion folded strip of paper and then you glue it end to end um, I use hot glue and I glue it end to end and then I glue like little medallions in the middle because otherwise it'll just pop up into a cylinder so maybe that's probably glue not strong enough I would do hot glue if you can you know if you can use it safely um, another one is when we order stamps off Amazon and it says being sent by penny black or whimsy stamps did they get most of the profit or does it go to Amazon um, well, it really depends. If it's something Amazon stocks, then Amazon has wholesale purchased it from those sites. So they'd be paying whatever um, Penny Black charges them. But a lot of these companies have Amazon stores because nowadays it's really, um, it's kind of hard to succeed in business without having an Amazon store. So it's all the money less Amazon's listing fee and less any affiliate fees would be going to... Um, would be going to Penny Black or Whimsy. As long as you're getting a legit stamp, like if it says sold by Penny Black or Whimsy, then it's a legit. A lot of times you'll see knockoffs on these um, on these websites that are just going to uh, some seller overseas that is just ripped off a design. I've seen I've seen ripped off um, Penny Black images, which is such a shame because they're and you wouldn't get a good quality stamp. You'd get a cheap silicone stamp. But um, unfortunately, that exists. But yeah, if, if it's if a store is listing it there, oftentimes if you go to a store's website, they'll have a better price, um, and then more money would be going to the the store that way. Um, another question is, can you use hairspray to seal? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I do that. I use uh, I like Aquanet because it has a, has a fewer um, additives and silicones and stuff. You want to have something that's basically shellac, and uh, Aquanet's pretty pretty shellacky. Um, I think I'm going to do this one with a little bit of a sports theme. I've got this little uh, kind of baseball trading card image I'm going to stamp. I love these uh, old crafty secrets sets. Look how gorgeous that is. Man, if you find some old crafty secret stamps, grab them. I, I think that company went out of business, but their stamps are so beautiful. Any more questions? Yep. Okay. Um, what about acrylic stamps? How do you get them to stick? Well, if they're not, they should just stick, but if they're not sticking, then I would recommend uh, washing them with soap and water and washing your blocks because you got some grease somewhere. And sometimes, like especially, I've had like those $1 stamps from Joann's, um, like I take them out of the package and they're just, they feel like greasy and I think they never went through the wash process, like after they were molded, so um, that could be, you know, that could have been a situation where... It didn't go through its full process if it was a cheaper one or it never got uh, never got washed off from the the mold release or whatever i'm gonna try stamping that again that stamped all right but i know i can i think the paper's a little too textured um joe asks if there are any videos coming for those peony postcards yeah next week i i and i live narrated it and it was um 
I don't know how long it is. I, I put it up on the computer and I left a note for Jason to edit it. So uh, I have no idea how long it is. <laughs> Hopefully it's not like an hour long and, uh, and I can put it up live narrated. But it was so cool because I used my uh, letterpress jig for my die cutter machine in place of a Misty and I think it worked fantastic. <laughs> You know, I just find those those types of stamps just very tedious anyway. But as long as I don't sound annoyed in the video when I listen it back, then I'm going to keep it live narrated. I don't think I was very annoyed. I just for, I always forget between using layered stamps how tedious they are. Um, what stamp is the coral flower in the round vase? That one is by a company called The Ton. And it's an older stamp, so I don't know if it's still available. But if you... I don't know if their website is theton.com, but T-H-E... T O N the ton like a ton of bricks. Um, you can go check that out and see if they have it. Ooh, this is a good opportunity to use my decalage scissors. Another question is for intricate work like quilling. What glue do you suggest? Suggest. Um, I think it's more about the applicator than the glue. Uh, actually, a lot of times I'll just take a toothpick. I'll squirt out a puddle of like. Um, tacky glue white glue something that's that dries matte though like maybe matte mod podge and i would just dip a toothpick in it and i would use that because then i won't have um i won't have any shiny spots if i don't glue very well i'm gonna ink that a little bit someone says um, every single time they go to your website it doesn't load that's weird i haven't heard uh I haven't heard an issue about that, but I will definitely look into it. Uh, one more. Will you be bringing scrapbooking back to your YouTube channel? I don't know. That's, I don't know. I don't do it very often, but I, for some reason, I think just being locked down, I've been like making bread like crazy and just feel like scrapbooking. I think I'm like, I don't know, nesting or something. Um, I guess if this video is really popular and there's a desire for it from you guys, I will. I mean, if people want to see scrapbooking, I don't feel like I'm a very, like, up-to-date, trendy scrapbooker. You know, I feel like there's, you know, other channels, I mean, I, I assume people are still scrapbooking on YouTube, um, you know, that there are other trendy channels doing more exciting things. But, hey, if you guys, if, if people want it, and people watch the video and they like it, then I have no reason why, why I wouldn't. Ooh, you know what? Nah, a couple more stamps. We're almost done, guys. <laughs> Hang in there! I'm almost done. Uh, I've lost all my stamp mounts except for this one. Oh, here's one. Where'd you get your decal edge scissors? Um, oh, here, there, and everywhere, I think. Um, I got I got a set, I think, at one point. Some are Provocraft, which are were like 99 cents at AC Moore. My favorite are the Fiskers, and those I think you can still find most places. Um, yeah, those are, Fiskers are the, are the way to go, and I would just get the, get the designs you really love in Fiskers, and then you can get, you know, cheapos for, for the other ones. Put someone says, cooking with Lindsay, question mark? No, no cooking with Lindsay. <laughs> nope, that would be a recipe for disaster. Do baseballs have red strings? Yes. Okay, can you pass me a red water-based marker? trendy and up-to-date is not part of what makes you awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank goodness. <laughs> I wouldn't have any, uh, anybody watching. All right, so I'm going to stamp that with brown. I'm going to hit this, the, the, uh, stripey things, this, the threads with red. I'm going to scribble off any brown ink that's left over. Someone said this is the fastest 113 minutes ever. <laughs> Aww, that's so sweet. All right, and I want to do this mitt. I'm stamping this dark brown, and if it's not, if I need more brown, I'll just dust it on there. Yeah, this has been fun. I can't believe how long we've been scrapping. Jason might be making dinner again tonight. <laughs> I got carried away making my uh, cards down here. 
last night and I was like, oh, dinner time, and I went up and he was already making dinner. There, I'll do a mitten of baseball. I think that'll work. Plenty of, what do you guys, guys have any good ideas for dinner? I was thinking I would do, try to do some fried rice, like vegetarian fried rice. I think you should. I, doesn't that sound good? Yeah. I haven't had rice in forever. I kind of got all breaded out. I made cinnamon rolls the other day and I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm sick of bread. Lila, can you pass me a very light brown or tan marker? Water base? Yeah, water base. Um, we'd really like, like... Oh, actually, no, alcohol would be fine. Either, either. That one will work, actually, I bet. Is that too light? I don't think so. They always come out darker. No, that's good. People are saying fried rice sounds good. Hmm, it does. I agree. So the replay of this will be available. Um, I don't like I like I said I don't know how terribly useful this video will be just because a lot of the the products I'm using are older. However, they're still the techniques are the same. You know you can use whatever you have. If you don't have stamps, you can go online. You can find clip art. Um, just search like you know school clip art or baseball clip art or you know whatever it is you you need to find. And that should, you know, you should get, you can get images that way. I don't know if I like that. Someone said lentil patties are really good. And someone else said black bean soup. Ooh, that does sound good. Hi, tomato soup for... Chimichangas. Mm. These people do not know what I have in my house for groceries, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is getting pretty bleak. <laughs> but I can do fried rice. I like that. Oh, don't you love it when you just drop something on the card and it works? Uh, Heather said, I sound mature and how old we are. We're both 15 now. I know if there's one regret that I have before this whole lockdown was that you guys didn't get your drivers, uh, your drivers ed done because what wonderful time to learn to drive you know, to get all those hours in. When nobody's out there. Nobody's on the road, gas is cheap. I mean, it would be the perfect time to be getting your practice hours in. So that would be my advice to anybody that's got a teenager that's got their learner's permit, um, because you gotta get 70 hours to get your driver's license. It seems to take a very long time. Oh, I'm gonna fussy cut the Go Team banner. I think that would be really cute. Uh, maybe I'm stalling so dad will cook. <laughs> like, hmm, I think I need a little more embellishing here. Hmm, do I smell dinner cooking? <laughs> do I smell dinner yet? <laughs> Someone asked again, is the whole family vegetarian? No, I, me and my mom are, and the rest of the family isn't. Every once in a while, someone will do like a vegan month though. You know, so like Jackson. Dad's never. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, actually, Dad has done vegan. Really? Uh, vegan months before, yep. Vegan? Yeah. Was I alive? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think so. When we were when we were dating. Hey, where's your lovely black furry helper? Where is Tally? Oh, oh. Is she outside? Ah, oh, she might be. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining, but we have a porch, so. I left the front door open um, so she could put her paws up and somebody could let her in on the screen door. We're getting snow. Uh, it's raining right now, but we're supposed to get, um, I think, in the Bangor area, six inches of snow, up to 12 in northern Maine. So that'll be interesting. Shouldn't last too long, but still, what a bummer. It's April. <laughs> Crying out loud. Tracy asks, what do you put in your fried rice? Um, it's soy sauce, whatever vegetables I have. Um, I like mushrooms. We don't have any mushrooms though. I like onions, but Jason doesn't like onions. Um, so often I'll leave those out. I'll do garlic though. Um, uh, carrots, spinach, tofu. Um, 
cubed up really small so nobody can see it. That's a real key right there, friends. You gotta cut that tofu up small. Make it look like bits of egg or something. Someone asked if we eat chicken and fish, and Tracy goes, LOL, that's not vegetarian. <laughs> no, we don't. The others do, though. Actually, they don't really eat fish that much. Which is, you know, coming from Maine, that's probably a real shame, because there are there's a lot of fish to be had. And, like, the fishermen, I guess, have been, um, with the lockdown, they've been selling their fish, um, like, in parking lots and stuff. Which I know sounds totally gross, but it's t it's kind of a main thing. It's it's legit. People people do that. All right, I'm gonna glue that down. I'm gonna use my handy dandy little Elmer's glue pen. These are three for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. So far, so good for gluing down. I wouldn't try to glue down a photo on a layout or anything, you know, major. But for something like a die cut, it seems to do the trick. I'm getting squeezing too hard though. I'm getting too much. I'm just gonna pick it up and move it. used to be these nice little glue pens that I would get at AC Moore. They were by the Nicole brand and there would be like a pack of 10. I can't remember what they were, how much they cost. They weren't much. And I used to use them and then I'd refill them. I'd get to refill them probably once or twice before they had to be tossed. I just have gone to the point where I hate anything disposable now. Uh, so I keep refilling my little containers and then they get really difficult to use. Question, do you have no meat meat? <laughs> Oh yeah, I've got I've got the pro a product called uh, Veggie Crumbles, which is by Gardein. Actually, I don't think they call them crumbles, but there was a company that used to call them crumbles. Boca Burger, I think, used to make them, and they're Those like vegetarian you... chicken. Yep, stuff yep, vegetarian too. chicken. I really like the Gardein brand. Um, they're the Gardein brand is vegan. A lot of the different ones aren't. Well, that would have been cute. I'm gonna cut that out and add that. See, nothing has to go to waste here. Um, yeah, I like the Gardein brand because it's vegan. And, you know, you can find them right at the regular grocery store. You don't have to make a special trip to the natural food store, which is nice. But, yeah, the reason I use them is because it's very convenient and that we don't have to cook two meals. So if I'm doing, um, like, we do a lot of pasta or baked potatoes or rice or something, and then we'll have, like, a, a protein side. So if I'm doing, because um, I absolutely detest dealing with raw chicken, so I'll buy, like, the um, chicken tenders and... I can throw those in the oven with the vegetarian, like seven grain tenders from Gardein and cook them all at the same time. They all cook at the same, the same, um, temperature and at the same time. So I don't have to cook two meals. It's much more convenient. And then everyone's also essentially eating the same thing. They're, you know, we're eating something very simple, a uh, similar. So that's what I do a lot. And like, they have like vegetarian meatballs and pretty much anything that you could find it just makes it easier like if i'm if i'm making um like um beef hamburgers for the meat eaters i can easily cook up some veggie burgers it just you know lets everybody kind of eat the same thing without it being like a big ordeal to cook two different meals so there are the cards i think they're cute um, they would be really cute to send to a teacher or something, you know, tell them, or, you know, man, the, the school teachers around here, I don't know if it's the same in every community around the country, but they have been like doing such a great job getting the kids up to speed and they've been even, um, taking food to families from, from the, uh, from the schools, the buses, the bus drivers too. They've been, they've been driving around and delivering uh, food to families. I think that's so wonderful. And, you know, they're definitely working hard. Well, you know, folks like me could stay at home. And there's our layout. I'll do the journaling some other time, but I like to have a few places just to write, you know, at the very least, who's in the picture, how old they are. Um, it can be really intimidating to do the journaling. I find sometimes typing helps because if you don't like your handwriting, you can type it on a computer or a typewriter and put it on your layout and that works good. But I mean, names and a date, at the, at the very least, and you don't have to make it a big thing. Uh, do we have any questions before we go? I'm looking. I don't think so. 
All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm going to try to do a live stream a week during the whole lockdown. I can't believe we've been live for two hours. That's crazy. But it was so much fun. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate it. And I don't know what we're going to do next week. It'll probably be a painting one. But I do hope you come back. Um, even if you're not into painting, you can always chat with your friends and in, spend some time. Enjoy, you know, enjoy with like-minded folks that love arts and crafts. You have anything to say before we go, Lila? <laughs> Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you for moderating, Lila, and thanks to all the other moderators in the stream as well. See you later. Happy crafting.